David Wycombe of eLending Now says secondary lenders don't want adjustable rate mortgages in their portfolios because of uncertainty in the lending market. As a result of the overwhelming unaffordability with both prices and interest rates, more and more recent homeowners are cutting corners and putting their entire financial situation at risk by getting an adjustable rate mortgage. Again, you guys run the US, we have fixed rate mortgages, okay? And these people, they don't understand how these interest rates work. Many of these homeowners are now being hit with massive increases in payments. And it's not just with the mortgage. Also, property taxes, and I can tell you I'm in Texas, property taxes have absolutely skyrocketed. Homeowners insurance has absolutely skyrocketed. The overall cost to live, everyone knows this. As a result of the overwhelming unaffordability with both prices and interest rates, more and more recent homeowners are cutting corners and putting their entire financial situation at risk by getting an adjustable rate mortgage. Again, you guys run the US, we have fixed rate mortgages, okay? And these people, they don't understand how these interest rates work. Many of these homeowners are now being hit with massive increases in payments. And it's not just with the mortgage. Also, property taxes, and I can tell you I'm in Texas, homeowners insurance has absolutely skyrocketed. The overall cost to live, everyone knows this. Why am I saying this? The overall cost to live has absolutely skyrocketed. And with these adjustable rate mortgages skyrocketing as well, this is putting an overwhelming amount of pressure on these recent homeowners or really any homeowner. I mean, obviously, I mean, we know this. Why am I saying this, right? But any homeowner that has this situation, these adjustable rate mortgages that did not prepare for this is being forced to sell. But guys, here's the problem. Many of these people, if you're just joining us, many of these people have an inability to sell because they're upside down in their house. And more than likely, the option for many of these people is to do something like a short sell, loan modification, or foreclosure, which absolutely is devastating to their financial situation and their purchasing power. So when it comes time and prices do go down, unemployment goes up, interest rates go down, inventory goes up, and the cost to own plummets, they're not going to be able to buy. But those of us who have been patient, that have not cut corners. Those of us have made it through the bullying that we're not putting ourselves and our families in overwhelmingly riskful situations. We will become winners on the other side of this cycle. And so if you're on the sideline, if you're working with the purchasing power, I want to say before we continue, I'm proud of you. Keep it up. And welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in. And today we're going to talk about everything adjustable rate mortgages, or as we refer to in the industry, an ARM. Okay, so again, ARM, A-R-M, adjustable rate mortgage. Either way, pay attention. You guys, overall, what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to cut corners. We have fixed rate mortgages. There's no need to rush something that you can't afford. Just guys, please, it's not worth it. All right, but let's see how many people have got adjustable rate mortgage. And I'm gonna bring up some data that goes into the buy down, the temporary buy down mortgages, which is its own set of problem. We have a huge explosion of temporary buy downs right now that are massively increasing in payments. It'll probably last through 2025 and end, but you guys, people right now, especially recent homeowners are getting beat up. Take a look at some of this data. All right, so this is an article from mpamag.com titled, Adjustable Rate Mortgage Holders Face Higher Mortgage Payments. And that's exactly what I don't want to happen to you. And if you bought a new home, that's probably exactly what happened to you. In fact, do us a favor if you're part of our community, if you want to caution people, help people grow. If you've recently bought a new home and your payment has skyrocketed as a result of homeowner's insurance, adjustable rate mortgage, temporary buy-down, or especially property taxes, okay? New home property tax risks, huge, huge risk for property tax exploding for new homes. Comment below, warn the community of what happened to you. How much did your payment go up the second year of home ownership as a result of property taxes? Comment below. 
Thousands of homeowners with adjustable rate mortgages are bracing for significantly higher monthly payments this year as their loans reset to current market rates. According to data from ICE, Intercontinental Exchange, 328,000 ARM loans have already reset. Ouch! These people are in tremendous turmoil, or at least that's a massive hit. That is a massive hit with another 102,000 loans, families, households set to adjust over just the next 12 months. This comes as mortgage rates remain elevated, contributing to one of the most unaffordable housing markets in decades. I'm going to tell you guys right now, one of the factors for the GFC, the great financial crisis, was adjustable rate mortgages. It was also speculation and loose guidelines, but a little bit of it was adjustable rate mortgages. So when you see this happening, you have to ask yourself, how much longer is this going to sustain and why have we not learned our lesson? That's what I really want to understand. Why are we not learning? And if you've learned and you're awake, help people, help educate people like, hey, just slow down a little bit. Life is more important than just owning an overpriced house that you can barely afford. If you're single and you buy and your head's in the sand and you're just going to buy, guess what? You have a new spouse. It's called your mortgage payment. And it's going to be around for 30 years. Regardless, let's listen to a video on unaffordability so we get a better idea of what's going on in America. Now, it's a little bit spicy. It goes in. It gets a little bit political. Personally, I'm not going to get political but they bring up some very interesting points. Again, I'm not getting political. Don't come at me, man, okay? I'm not political, but take a listen to this video. Joe Biden, the dream of buying a home is really falling further out of reach for many Americans as mortgage rates surge past 7%. Now monthly payments are nearly double what they were when he first took office back in 2020. Again, I'm not getting political, but they are bringing up some very interesting comparisons. Right now, things are way, way more unaffordable. And what is happening is people are like trying to chase how affordable houses used to be. And they're putting themselves and their families at risk because they think that they have to buy a house. They think that they have to fit into society or chase a dream or whatever it is. When all they need to do right now is be patient, be self-disciplined, sacrifice some things, save your money, work on your purchasing power, and be happy. Now listen to this video, it gets a little crazy. Last year, affordability for homes Why is she slurring? was the worst in 40 years. And now it's going yeah. in the wrong direction. People are upset, they want to be able to buy a home. And here's my question, whatever Joe Biden does to fix this problem is only gonna make it worse. That is a question. That has been the rule of thumb uh, under Biden. Pretty much everything they've been doing is making it worse. You know, there are two pieces to home costs, two big pieces. One of them is going to be the interest rate, so the mortgage rate. The other one is going to be the price of the house itself. Both of those have been going in the wrong direction. So houses have been soaring. A big part of that was what the Fed did during the pandemic, print up all this new money. That pumped up groceries. It pumped up you know, gasoline prices, and a lot of it ended up going into houses. So houses have skyrocketed, and then the Fed tried to fix its mistakes by fiddling around with interest rates, and that's given us now 7% mortgage. It's actually hit eight late last year. It looks like we're going back in that direction because we're going on five months now of inflation going up again. They promised us. You remember, this was supposed to be transitory. So you remember when they said it's transitory and you can just refinance later? What about all the homeowners for the last two years who have been waiting for interest rates to go down because they cannot afford their house? What about those people that got bamboozled by taking the advice of awful realtors? I mean, you guys, listen again, you can't cut corners. The more unaffordable something is, the more caution you need to have, not the more risk you need to take. It's the opposite. People are like putting more risk into something that's less worth it, right? I mean, when rates are like 2% and home values are going up because they have room, send it, right? But right now it's horrible. Stop taking these risks. If you find something wedge, cash flow, right, right expectations, you're in a great position as a consumer, do what you want to do, right? But people aren't doing that. Citizens are sold on a lifestyle that they cannot afford and that deep down their souls do not want and it is not healthy to live. I'm telling you guys, people need love. People need relationships, not this whole rat race that we are sold and that we trap ourselves in. Do you guys agree?
So that's the video. And Peter, you know, there's another factor, is, which is that taxes are not going down. They are also going up, just like inflation. And a lot of these, a lot of these taxes, these, these uh, taxes for the home that you buy, make people wonder whether they're ever going to be able to buy a home or whether they can afford it because the taxes keep going up, uh, interest rates are going up. I mean, I, uh, particularly young people, the, the newcomers to, to home buying, they are really cut out of this market, aren't they? They're absolutely cut out. They cannot form families. You know, you've got people who grew up in a house that their parents owned, all right, and now they're look what they're 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 in their thirties, living with roommates, uh, eating ramen. They can't even think about getting married, starting a family, having an extra bedroom for the kids. So the Zoomers and the Millennials mm. are really trapped at this point. A lot of them are just giving up. Uh, this new poll came out: forty percent of renters think that they will never ever own a house. Yeah. If you're never going to own a house, it's very hard to build a nest egg. A lot of these people they just yep. doom spend. They go off a waste money on our Caribbean vacation because they don't, it, they've just given up. Let me ask you guys something. Are you doom spending? Have you given up? If so, don't. When I look back at my own situation, again, I had a foreclosure, a repo, tax lien. I lost my confidence. It lost my soul. Felt like I lost my family. You know, I was doom spending and I was chasing a lifestyle that I, for some reason, I don't know why I was chasing it. I was sold myself on something stupid. But the thing is, is if I would have stopped six months before I lost everything, my whole life would have changed. And so there is hope. They want you to lose hope because the more hope that we lose society, you know, society and consumers, the worse we spend, the less we care about our finances, the less we care about our future, retiring, the less we care about those things. And the more we care about right now and fulfilling needs that we could wait on right? Don't allow yourself to be a victim to this rat race. And one of the things that these people are doing that are a part of this rat race is they're taking adjustable rate mortgages when they don't need to. And you guys, it's not just hundreds of thousands of adjustable rate mortgages that are exploding right now, again, wreaking havoc right now. As you're watching this, families are in distress. It's also these temporary buy downs. And so what I did is, is I used AI to try to generate and give us an idea of just how many temporary buy downs there actually are. Take a look. Again, so we asked the question, how many temporary buy down loans are coming due? You know, using AI, it's just, it's getting ridiculous, you guys, but here's what it says, okay? This trend was likely a response to the increasing rates and may have contributed to the unexpected resilience of home buying demand despite elevated interest rates when? In 2023. Remember, they took out crazy, the home builders did crazy tricks in 2023, you guys. Don't forget that. They were giving fixed rates and these buy down rates you know, in the 3% still. It's absolutely crazy. But take a look at this, guys. The use of temporary buy-downs reached its zenith in December of 2023 when they comprised of 7.6% of Freddie Mac funded loans, which means the people that purchased up into 2022, 7.6% of those loans that, again, were sold to Freddie Mac have rates that are adjusting rapidly. That's absolutely crazy, you guys. And this is very interesting when we look at the current status. While the exact number of temporary buy-down loans coming due is not explicitly stated in the provided information because new home builders have a lack of transparency, given that most temporary buy-downs last one to three years, loans initiated during the surge in late 2022 would be coming due between late 2023 to late 2025. And so the temporary buy-downs have just begun. And you guys, this is such a double whammy because generally these temporary buy downs, generally they're with new homes. Okay. And so not only are they getting hit with an increased mortgage payment, like skyrocketing, right? They're also getting hit, like I said, with property taxes. Most escrow accounts, most mortgages, I say this all the time. You guys better do something about it. They're originated based on dirt value. So you're paying money on dirt. And so when the county assessor realizes, Hey, these guys are paying money on dirt, not the actual dwelling. They come at you and you guys pay $8,000. You guys knock on the door or letter in the mail or to your mortgage company. Hey, you guys are short. It's called an escrow shortage. You guys are short eight grand. How do you plan on paying us that? I mean, raise your hand if you have $8,000 hypothetically in January that you can afford to just throw away to property taxes. You guys, I'm telling you, be 
cautious. Now remember you guys, as always, if you're on the sideline like me, don't just keep your head in the sand. Don't just twiddle your fingers. Don't be hateful. Be happy. Do something about your purchasing power. Increase your credit by manipulating your credit cards. Make sure your utilization ratio is under 30%. Work on your income. Understand how qualifying income works. Work as much overtime, commission, and bonus, second job that you have because it helps your purchasing power. And the other thing, assets. Make sure you put yourself in a situation to where you're saving money because you guys get this. If you're not able to save money, you're living paycheck to paycheck. I don't want you guys to fall victim to that kind of of lifestyle. We are better than that. Do the best you can to rebudget, to get ahead, keep your purchasing power intact. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys know that I wish you luck and that I hope you win.